All right, hello everyone. We're back for game number two in Icy Cup versus versus Pro. Of course, Icy Cup took the first game, so VP going to be on the back foot going in the second one. Once again, we're going to have me, Kanaz, as your main commentary. We're, I'm going to be joined once again by Vikramon as my co-caster and, of course, K-Poptosis helping us out with stats. So let's get into the draft, which has already started. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Yeah, happy to be here, Kanaz. We had a pretty cool game one. I, I'm so excited by the fact that Icy Cup are putting up as great of a fight as they do. I mean, we called them the CIS Slayers. Uh, I know Shiver will be very happy to see that VOD of game one, even if they do end up losing. And uh, they played great. And here they head up into game two. We see VP already setting up an even stronger Tame My Wild Hero for game two than they had for game one. They had Queen of Pain game one. Here we see Puck. I don't know if he'll be able to... I don't know, Knaz, but do you think he'll be able to generate more opportunities this time against the Bat Rider than he was last time? I mean, I guess one of the differences between Puck and Queen of Pain is really how early they start getting aggressive. Queen of Pain usually can go a little bit more for getting that farm early on in the game, and then eventually farming later in the game and sort of transitioning to a semi-carry. Puck is sort of always aggression all the time. Even in lane, you're constantly using spells that have a little bit longer range, obviously, orb it's easier to harass with than something like Scream of Pain, where you have to be basically adjacent to the hero you're targeting. Uh, once you get that ultimate, you can set up kills just because it's hard to get away. And uh, Batrider ha struggles a little bit, I think, against Puck. If you blink yeah. in and Puck has good reaction times, you can get the silence off, you can get the uh, phase shift off. If you drop the Dream Coil, it's hard to really pull someone far away because you can't move far away from where the Dream Coil was placed. So I think it's a pretty yeah. good matchup, and I think, again, definitely an aggressive hero that we've seen Tame My Wild have uh, tons of success on. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say right now that I would expect VP to take Lone Druid for Xe this time. And if they don't, I, I have to express my deep concern for their push. Because that's the one thing that I already don't like after these first two. Okay, okay. All right. Fears allayed. Because VP falls into this trap a lot. Where they pick a lineup that's amazing at getting kills. And terrible at actually pushing and winning the game off those kills. And so if they hadn't secured the Lone Druid here, not only would they run out of heroes for Xe to play, they would also uh, not have that many more opportunities to pick up heavy pushers. It would have to be off their supports, and they don't... They play Chen, but they don't really love Chen. It's like, it's not really a love connection, I feel like, even though NS does play a very good Chen. So the Lone Druid, I think, fixes that. It, it sets them up well. They've got this dual core that we talked about as being so important. It's going to be Airman on Weaver, Xe on Druid, and I already feel more comfortable about this lineup than I did about Game 1. Yeah, I think that's one of the most interesting things that uh, you were really pointing out, especially yesterday. They picked the lineups that were certainly powerful. They had a lot of heroes that were good at fighting heroes. They just didn't pick up a lot of heroes that were good at fighting buildings. And when it comes down to it, in Dota 2, it's defense of the ancients, not defense of yourself. you got to keep your buildings <laughs> alive, and you got to kill the enemy's buildings. Uh, so having those team fight heroes is great, but you need something that when you win the team fight, you're going to be able to take some advantage on the map, take some of those buildings down, and eventually crack their base. Lone Druid, definitely a better hero than really what we've seen coming up from Virtus Pro in the last couple games. Yeah, I, I mean, I think I, I really like this LD. I think it's exactly what we sort of thought that they might need when we did the pregame. I am interested by this Icy Cup Disruptor, and hopefully K-pop will give us a little bit of a stats dose about this later, because I feel like this is almost more of a hero that VP really likes, rather than a hero that Icy Cup's necessarily all that familiar or strong with. Now, it is potentially very strong against Puck. Because you can, uh, if you have good vision, you can actually glimpse Puck back from Illusory Orbs, for instance. You can silence the Puck with the silencing field. Of course, the Static Storm can just completely shut Puck down in a fight. Also quite good against Weaver if, again, you have the vision to do it. And uh, Virtus Pro, meanwhile, responds with the Nyx Assassin, so uh, Kanaz. <laughs> Yeah, we're getting there. My my MVP, it's going to come out. All right, sorry, he's going to play this next well for me to be right. Uh, so Disruptor against Puck. Correct me if I'm wrong, but can you phase shift the, the disruption by doing it right as it's about to hit the pullback point? Ooh, ha. Huh. So I think that's a really good question. I'm not entirely sure how uh, Glimpse interacts with phase shift. I suspect that you need to phase shift as the projectile is hitting you. So it actually has a very, very fast-moving projectile that gets thrown out from Disruptor. 
But I'm not sure, actually. Yeah, uh, I, don't, I don't know if it's like as that lightning hits the point back where you were, or if it's as the like cast projectile hits you, or what. I've never, I've never seen this interaction before, but I'm interested to see if it comes up in this game and exactly how it works. Uh, could be very powerful for Tame My Wild if he's able to dodge a couple glimpses uh, during the course of the game and then make something big happen. But uh, Naga pickup from Icy Cup, not really what I was expecting. I think Virtus Pro is the team we've really been talking up. Their Naga play lately, but we are going to get to see. Uh, this is actually a pretty Virtus Pro lineup coming out of Icy Cup right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, so Face Shift will not stop Glimpse. Will not stop Glimpse. Glimpse. It'll just pull yep. you back to it. Okay. Now we know. Yeah, so Disruptor actually potentially a good puck counter. The one issue is they will need better vision than either team had last game. So this is an area where the fact that you get one less set of wards over the course of the game might actually be consequential. I would expect a lot of counter warding. I would also expect gem wars. Uh, we have a weaver on the field, so having a gem is very, very important against that hero. However, if they're carrying gems on their supports, you run the risk of Nyx Assassin preying on you very heavily, because of course Nyx tears the ever-loving crap out of supports, especially if he's ahead on levels. So it's going to be a war for gems, it's going to be a war for vision, and the more vision IC Cup have, the more Glimpse is going to wreak havoc on Virtus Pro. Yeah, uh, definitely if they have a lot of sight up here, it's hard to do things with Nyx Assassin, obviously. It's hard to create that pressure. Uh, but also, Weaver, if you can have sight in the fights and Shikuchi becomes a lot less relevant, you hold her in place. Uh, if you hold the Weaver in place via the uh, kinetic field as well, it's hard to get out of that. And then you end up getting silenced by a static storm. Uh, things can go pretty poorly for a hero like Weaver very quickly. Not really tanky relies on sort of the trickiness being able to get away with abilities like time lapse huh. like Shikuchi. And Icy Cup's last pick is Leshrac. <laughs> I, is there a bug? Am I seeing Virtus Pro on the radiant here? I, because I, Naga Siren, Disruptor, Nature's Prophet, Lashrac. I mean, Tame My Wild doesn't particularly love Batrider, but it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me. This is very interesting in terms of just how much like a VP lineup this IC Cup lineup is, and it is it, it's the way that I that VP plays Naga as a farmer, not the way Quantic oh, plays Naga no. as a support, not the way Team Liquid plays Naga as a solo mid. They're going to run her as a farmer and a setup hero for big team fight abilities coming out of Disruptor and Lashrac. And honestly, as long as they have the familiarity with it, as long as they can execute it properly, I love this lineup. Yeah, definitely. This It's really strange. Uh, I feel like this Icy Cup lineup is exactly something I would see from VP. Resolution, obviously, Batrider not his favorite hero, but he plays Batrider at least with some frequency. Whenever they get, it, it ends up on him quite often. And the rest of these heroes, it's like exactly what I would expect them to be playing right now in this current patch, especially with how much disruption they've been playing lately. Uh, yeah, we'll see how it ends up working out for him. In the meantime, I'm going to introduce Virtus Pro and their heroes. It looks like they're going to be on the dire side. I'm going to have Tame My Wild on the puck heading towards that mid lane. Their defensive Charlie going to be composed of Arsart on the Nyx Assassin, NS on the Jakiro, and Airman Illidan on the Weaver. Finally, they're offlane. That's going to be the Lone Druid, and that will be handled by Kasai. Alright, looking up towards Icy Cup, just checking the Roche real quick. I guess it's possible for VP to Roche. They take Liquid Fire first for Jakiro, so... And of course, they're a team that does level 1 Roche with just about any lineup, so... Better safe than sorry for Icy Cup. I think uh, they definitely want to take this as quickly as they possibly can. And speaking of Icy Cup, the tri-lane will be uh, we just sick on the Disruptor. So yeah, VP, 29 uses of Disruptor. Icy Cup, 3 uses of Disruptor. But here, maybe they cut VP's plan to pick this hero short by taking this. And they are 3-0 and with him, so uh, certainly some success even on a small sample size. That'll be Weegis Zik. He's joined in the tri -lane by Jackal on the carry Naga Siren, and always want to fly on the Lashrac, currently trying to punish this Xe Bear a little bit. That leaves Resolution to go up in the middle as the Batrider, the second game in this series for him to play Batrider first time in the mid. And then the offlane will be handled by Mag on the Nature's Prophet, who frankly might have a little bit of a difficult time against a lineup that has two stuns and a weaver. Yeah, we'll see how long Mag actually stays up in that tri lane on the Nature's Prophet, or if he just decides to abandon to the jungle in the near future. He's trying to just be a nuisance for now, and this could definitely be very beneficial. Uh, for Icy Cup in general. It hurts Mag a little bit, but again, Virtus Pro, I feel like they heavily rely on their supports being able to get some early levels move around. They didn't really have a lot of success last game. Obviously, Lino, Wisp both took quite some time to start getting those levels, and uh, 
with a hero like Nyx Assassin, we know Iron Shark loves to move around, get those levels quickly. Usually yeah. rushes stuff like Blink Dagger just for more aggression and initiation power. And if he's not able to do that because there's constantly Treants up there trying to disrupt pulls, it could be pretty good, but Meg is going to head to the jungle now. It's probably about time. Yeah, I think this is a sensible choice on his part. He didn't have a single point of experience to his credit before that. Obviously, actually, he doesn't know this, but he could have probably headed up and gotten some XP, simply because, you know, uh, they were quite far away at that point. But it would be difficult. He'd obviously face a tremendous amount of risk there, and so he's going to have to go off to the jungle. The interesting thing to me is that Xi has also headed to the jungle, so doing a little better than Mag, but again, jungle lone druid, not the fastest jungler in the world. It will take some time for Xi to get established, and you're not going to see as big of a lone druid as Mag was last game, at least not at the same time points. Yeah. And as with Haste Rune, he's gonna... I don't think he can get Courier, though. It's flying already. Yeah, it's already a flying courier, and whenever these supports get this haste rune at two minutes, it seems like they ch immediately try and go this way and catch that courier in the middle lane. Not going to have any success this game, though, as it's flying, and of course NS doesn't really do damage on Jakiro, not at this level at least. Uh, I think this is probably the right call by uh, Kasai to go towards the uh, jungle as well. It's very yeah. difficult to survive in that lane. They have the Leshrex done, they have the net, which is of course a very long disable, and then uh, Disruptor he can just put a glimpse on you now, Once, even if you manage to get away from the damage they're doing early. And of course, Lone Druid is very squishy, pre-level 6 when he gets that ultimate, which gives him significantly more HP, some additional armor, to try and stay yeah. alive in those fights. Yeah. In the, in the pre-show panel, we talked a little bit about these supports from VP, and how they're able to generate a ton of pressure and sort of find farm. And I think in the first game, even though VP didn't take it, we will see Icy Cup almost certainly getting this tower, I think. But that's not tremendously consequential to the lines of play. One guy that I want to talk about is Arsart. Even against a composition that didn't favor him at all, he did very well last game, and now he's on a hero that he's even more successful with. He's got a 77% win rate on Nyx Assassin. And it's the sort of hero that I think is just much oh, more robust bottom lane, than the you know. Oh, side gonna get glimpsed back, dodges the stun, but it doesn't look like good for him, and he's gonna go down Jackal with the first blood. And that's what I was talking about Lone Druid. If he gets glimpsed and just pulled yeah. back, he doesn't really have survivability to do anything. He was trying to go with some body blocks with the bear. It's yeah. just not enough, though, and gives up first blood. That's a really good call, and this actually, with the kill and the tower, this does constrict VP's ability to rotate supports to get kills. Now it's going to be really hard for Arsar to actually find early kills by rotating over and killing supports. If they kill anybody early on, it's going to have to be resolution on Batrider. Not the easiest hero in the world to pick on. But I have faith in Arsar. I mean, he went 7-5 on Lina last game with just as much GPM as the Batrider. We'll have to see how the Nyx Assassin does, but against a team with four intelligence heroes, don't discount Mana Burn this game. Yeah, definitely Mana Burn could be doing a lot of damage as the game goes on, and of course, uh, some of these heroes are very squishy. Uh, Disruptor, in particular, does not have a lot of HP, and will be pretty easy to get picked off Radiant's by that Nyx Assassin once he's able to move around. And uh, Lone, or Nature's Prophet, Batrider, also pretty squishy heroes, comparatively, so things could definitely go well if Arsar gets a good Radiant's start and is able to start moving around. Unfortunately, though, Kasai, with that death... He's going to be getting farmed even slower here, and like you were mentioning, Lone Druid farm in the jungle, not fast to begin with. Yeah, now getting a little bit of help from NS just to clear through this quicker, because yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a long hard slog, and then if you double down on it with something like Midas, yep, it's going to be Midas. So this makes VP into even more of a non-VP-ish approach, I feel like, quite slow. They are farming too, which is something we said we sort of wanted to see, but it's going to take a while to get Xeed into the into the fray. The nice thing is, I mean, again, Airman farming amazingly well. 38 for 9 to considering that it's 29 for 3 on Jackal, and Weaver is going to do a lot of damage this game, I feel. Yeah, definitely. Um, there goes the ult on Resolution. They're trying to go in. Resolution trying not to break the Dream Coat. Looks like Nyx was trying to make his way in from the side, but not going to be able to. Because Always Wanna Fly happened to be in the area already on the Leshrex, so that Dream Coat going to be wasted. Resolution able to get away just fine. Uh, but I agree with you. Uh, I think one of the major differences, even though Kasai is having a little bit of trouble getting going on this Lone Druid, 
Weaver is not getting shut down at all. Illidan's getting complete free farm, and I think that's a little bit of a difference to maybe what's gone on in the last couple games against VP yeah. where the Lone Druid was there. Their other carries were getting shut down, and Lone Druid was getting free farm. As long as Definitely. one is strong, it buys time for the other. So I think we're going to have to react to this at some point, and Naga's certainly a powerful carry, especially when it gets late game, just any illusion carry is great yeah. for pushing. But uh, you're going to be facing up against Weaver and Lone Druid, and your carries yeah. are sort of nature's prophet, Naga. I don't, yeah, I think but they I, are going late game, because yeah. Naga Siren picks up a Midas the fourth time on record in Professional Dota 2, at least since around the TI2 period. Not a usual pick, because she's not really regarded as that late game of a carry, but if you, it kind of makes sense, because once he has like Heart and Manta, what is VP's strategy for clearing those illusions? Weaver is a hero that is not in any way good at clearing out an illusion stack. His only tool for doing so of any note is Shukuchi, and once those illusions are hearted, once they have the heart of Tarask at XHP, Shukuchi takes like four or five go rounds to actually do anything to them. We saw this in the Quantic games, where uh, Quantic against uh, Alliance first round, where Black was enormous on Weaver. Enormous! And yet he could not bring down those illusions for, of the Phantom Lancer. And I think they might be trying to repeat that success with this Midas-focused Naga. Get a ton of farm and make it undeal with a later. What a split-pushing lineup this is going to develop into with a Midas Nature's Prophet and a Midas Naga. Yeah, they're going to be able to get a ton of farm, a ton of experience. These levels that they're going to have are going to make them pretty resilient as well. And they're smoking towards the bottom lane. Looks like Arsar is going to be their target. I don't know if they're going to be able to get it. The Haste Rune is up on Batrider. He's going to stun a Creep Wave. That's that's a dead Arsar. Nick's Assassin going to go down even with... That's by Carapace. And Jackal gets the last hit as well, so another kill going his way. Even more farm on this Naga Siren. Uh, yeah, I think this split pushing is going to be so difficult to deal with as the game goes on. Nature's Prophet, Naga, they're going to have a ton of farm because of the Midas. And I don't know what exactly their plan is going to be for VP. Maybe it's Battle Fury Bear. We can see some big old Battle Fury Bears. Maybe. I mean, honestly, uh, Mjolnir isn't by any means a bad item for the bear, so that'll give them some AoE. They could even add the Battle Fury on. Again, it depends on how late the game goes. Illidan's getting great farm. He missed the last hit on the tower, but it's kind of tough with Weaver. His backswing on his attacks is tremendously long. But it's a trade of a tier 2. Oh, nice deny by an S. That was very neat. And I, I do like the Lincolns. Usually, I criticize Weaver Lincolns very heavily, but I like it here against at least Lasso, if nothing else. Yeah, it's also good against Net. You don't want to get caught by Ensnare True. from Naga Siren. Uh, Jekyll actually used the sleep there to get away from that tower. Uh, Arsar was running in, so that's going to be on cooldown for three minutes. It's a very, yeah. very long cooldown at level one. So they're going to know that's not up, and they can try and aggress a little bit towards this Naga Siren for the next few minutes. If they want to try and get a kill, slow down our farm, they have seen the Midas at this point. I'm sure someone has checked their inventory. Knows that they're going big. Of course, they're going to assume that Nature's Prophet has the Midas as well. And, uh... Right. That's the sort of thing you want to start getting picks on to try and slow that down as best you can because Midas is going to start adding up. Ah, they're putting the illusions... I, I like this idea of putting Naga up against Weaver a little bit simply because he is has such issues with tankiness and if you just continually smash him with Riptide, you can do that at low risk to you just by sending an illusion forward and hitting him with it and eventually he's just going to blow the time lapse and after that you just entangle and go for the kill. Uh, I, I like this. I think that they could stand to do more of it. But uh, Jackal, I actually I like the sleep because it was good instincts. I think they saw with this ward right here that Tame My Wild was rotating over. You have Tame My Wild here, and then the rest of VP here. If he jumps in across, like with a illusory orb, and then casts Dream Coil, you're actually screwed. You lose at least two. So the sleep was nice for the disengagement there. Yeah, if they were expecting more heroes to be there, it was certainly good senses. I mean, we know that uh, Puck wasn't there, but definitely a thing that could have happened, and now Puck is hanging out in this bottom lane. Uh, Lone Druid actually able to get his uh, Midas up before the Nature's Prophet, so doing a little bit better in terms of farm in that sense. Ring of Basilius was picked up on Mag first, just to make it so he could continually summon these treants to continue farming. And they're going on Illidan, top lane resolution invisible, just waiting for everyone to get close, and there it is. Illidan in a lot of trouble, they're using all the spells, he's gonna go down immediately. Arsar comes in behind, tries to throw the stun, gets too often, gonna get Glimps back, he might be in a lot of trouble now as well. The damage coming out from the Edict, pretty big, Illidan bought back. 
and tried to get back in there. He's not really doing a lot, and he took a lot of damage. We just zipped him down first, though. Arsar getting hit by some damage from the flame break, but not really going to do too much. Puck, in the meantime, was able to kill Nature's Prophet in the jungle. Huh? They're still chasing after Always Want to Fly. The Ice Path going to miss, and it looks like Illidan going to back off with that. So a pretty decent buyback. They end up getting a hero and not losing any more. Yeah, uh, honestly, that was a pretty legit buyback, I have to say. When you see that they use all their ultimates on you, why not? You know that they're not going to have ultimates, so with Arsard and an S coming in to help, that was a really nice. Uh, he'll be able to make up quite a bit of that farm, so because it's so early in the game that the buyback simply isn't tremendously expensive for him, and that'll let him resume farming towards his Lincolns, which, I mean, if that didn't prove that he needs the Lincolns, not much will. Like the, Lincoln saves him there, and instead he, he did drop, he did have to spend a buyback, but as, as long as he can resume the farming, as long as he can resume working towards Lincolns, I think he'll be happy. Yeah, and the next Midas in the game coming up, Nature's Prophet going to finish his nature, his Midas as well. Unfortunately, yep. did die just before getting it, so uh, problematic for him. But the gold, pretty close to even, a 250 yep. in favor of Icy Cup. Experience actually favoring VP, even with now double Midas. Of course, Mag hasn't been able to use this yet. This is a good blink, though, because VP doesn't know that Resolution actually has a pretty fast blink. Not the fastest blink in the history of mankind, but more than fast enough to generate an opportunity that VP won't be ready for. If they can get Weaver, if they can kill him, if they can get him again after the buyback, and here comes the lasso, we just and second always want to fly our here, the Disruptor ultimate, and that is a dead Weaver who cannot buy back. When you get a blink on bat, and when you build it out of sight of the enemies, you can almost always parlay that into an important opportunity. And I see Cup again displaying the crisp decision making and fast times that we've seen from them. But can Tame My Wild turn it around with this Invis room? I know it's really hard to say. Like, he's trying to get another gank on Nature's Prophet, and this is definitely an important hero for them to set up. Or is he looking for Jackal? I can't imagine he's going for both. There's really not anything else around to support him in that they've broken off from Jackal now, but Jackal's very difficult to kill at this point. Level 10 already has 1100 HP, and Tamerwald doesn't really have the burst. There goes the Dream Core, though. Throwing out the nukes. Arsark coming in. Gonna get the stun off. Can't actually hit with the Vendetta, but it will be the kill. Arsark getting the last hit, and no reaction in time from IC Cup. So it's a big kill to get because it does give Tamer Wild his Blink Dagger as well. Yeah, critical for them to try to match the Batrider blink with their own blink. Good rotation from Arsard. I think with just Tame My Wild alone, Jackal probably walks away from that. As you were saying, Kanaz, I mean, it was a difficult situation for Tame My Wild to generate himself. But he just uses the Invis Rune. He knew he had a lot of time left on it. He, he keeps an eye on the hero he wants more, which is this Midas Naga. I can't doubt this at all. And Arsard comes in to help him out. Very nice kill. Yep, and Blink Dagger now delivered to Puck, so she's going to have the Blink Dagger. He, I don't know gender. Uh, Puck is going to have the Blink Dagger coming into this mid lane. They're pushing on the tier 1 tower. No Dream Coil yet, but I think they might want to go for this. A lot of heroes in the region for VP. If the Glyph... There is no Glyph. Blink in. Going on Always Want to Fly. There's a stun as well. Taking a lot of damage. Can they get him down time? Stag Storm is there. It's hitting on Arsart and Tame My Wild, but the Sleep is there, so it's not doing a lot of damage. Arsart going to phase shift. Still life for a moment. Glimpse back into the fight. Taking a lot, and there's the ult from Barrett. Going to be the death. Jackal in the meantime getting entangled. Is it going to be the death of Jackal? They are going to get him down. The Vendetta for the last hit from Arsart. Doing a lot of damage. We just zig on the retreat. Kinetic, pa kinetic Field uh, catches two, and that will be the disengage, but they end up trading two for one. They get the puck, but they lose their carry Naga Siren, and that's a Midas mm -hmm. Naga once again, twice in the last about minute and a half. This And yeah, he didn't use it between, which you have to classify as a mistake. Obviously not your priority when you're in the middle of a fight, but this is the risk when you're running another team's lineup, is that you make a mistake like They're that. Get the Honestly, bear, the Naga sleep. Resolution yeah, was that's... able to kill the bear off. 300 gold for that. Yeah. I think that's a nice nice little boost for him, but yeah, that Naga sleep, I don't know what that did for them. And in fact, it uh, kind of prevented, it meant that they had to delegate a lot more resources to kill Puck than they otherwise would have when they could have just relied on the storm to do the work for them. And here's the gem, so watch out for gem wars, because it's going to be hard for Disruptor to hang on to this. Yeah. Uh, it's on the bat, rather. <coughs> I like that better. Excuse me. Yeah. Sorry, you're right there? Yeah, I was just uh, coughing a little bit. Um, Definitely, Batrider's a bear pick. We saw Disruptor pick it up, as I say. That's a little questionable, giving it to Disruptor. I don't think he's really survivable enough to stand in the front of the fight with a gem and just try and spot out, like, Arsard Initiation or uh, yeah, Weaver true. running around chasing after him. Smoke Ink is coming up, though, from Virtus Pro in this bottom lane. Uh, they're looking for somebody, unfortunately for them. Everyone from Icy Cup is not near that jungle. Yeah. 
Uh, this is going to be a tough smoke gank to make much happen. The nice thing is they have cleared out the tier 1 mid. So even though you don't have the tier 1 bot, this does give you the possible route that they're taking here. Yeah, which unfortunately, is, uh, pretty nice two sentries yeah. hanging out in this middle lane. <laughs> so if they walk past either of these, it's going to be pretty easy to spot out. They drop a very yeah, aggressive it's over ward. Anyway. Oh, the smoke wear off? Yeah. yeah. I think if they had managed to succeed with the smoke gank, they might have been able to go for a Roshan attempt. Does anyone have a medallion up? It doesn't look like it. Maybe it would have made it a little bit harder because they didn't have the armor reduction. Yeah, but he's getting pretty close to Radiance. Uh, he's about 800 off from the Relic. I think if he gets the last hit on the tower here, he can buy the Relic extremely quickly and then finish off the Radiance in a timely fashion. What just happened? What was that courier delivering? It was... Blades of Attack for NS. So he wants to land those perfect ice baths. He wants phase boots. Heck yeah, phase boots, Jakira, for the extra right-click damage as You're well. gonna die, no matter what, <laughs> yeah, so, so why bother power treads? You get a little bit more damage, you're able to position yourself a little bit better. A little bit better. Uh, definitely an interesting, I'm not one we commonly see, I think mana boots is kind of, or arcane boots, yeah. the obvious choice. Maybe not super concerned about it in this particular game, I don't know. Uh, but we are gonna see some heroes rotating down now towards this tier 2 in the bottom lane after they give up the tier 1. VP still hanging out down here. I don't think they're going to want to take this fight, though, and they do disengage. I honestly feel like, again, if this this is a game that... I, I don't know, actually. VP have a much better lineup for clashing with IC Cup later on, at least through the 30-35 minute mark or so. I do feel that if this game goes extremely late, IC Cup have the better push, straight up. They can push one lane with Nature's Prophet and one lane with Naga, and if you... You can try to duel the Nature's Prophet with Weaver, but he can probably get away. And Lone Druid is going to have to build a heck of a lot of cleave to deal with those Naga illusions later on. Yeah, definitely the illusions are going to be difficult. And, like, Leshrac, also pretty terrifying as a uh, support as the game goes on. If he gets mana, just like a large mana pool, you can stay in the middle of the fight with that Pulse Nova on, and they put out tons of magic damage. Of course, Edict, always effective against towers if you can sort of position yourself so it's mostly hitting the tower. Yeah, uh, that's a lot of pushing power. VP, I don't know what their plan is against that. If they're just hoping that they're gonna be bigger <laughs> and take team yeah. fights. Six and NS is done with his phases. Yeah, sixteenth yeah, time on record that Jakiro's bought the phase boots. Very interesting. Not obviously not a common thing, and we both expected oh, that. Oh, Tame My Wild. The sleep again in the Static Storm, wasting time. Tamer Wild looks like he'll probably go down, though, and does end up going down. But they ult from Jakiro doing big damage to Jakir uh, Leshrac just alive for a moment. Glimpse going to push Illid uh, Arsart back out of the fight. Always Wanna Fly going to go down. Illidan take a lot of damage and dies before Always Wanna Fly. In the meantime, Arsart trying to get out. So having a little bit of success thus far, but the gem is up on the bat right, so the is not going to work for now, and he's going to go down. That's four deaths for VP, and they don't get any kills. Just everything went poorly for them. They kept chasing after Always Wanna Fly. Couldn't quite get him down. He was throwing out urn charges between attacks and stuff to regain a little bit of health. He ends up surviving. He hit by the tower quite a bit there, but... Uh, yeah, Kanazumi, we talked about gem wars, and Icy Cup's winning. That gem was so huge in that fight, and I think I'm starting to see the idea with these Naga sleeps. She's trying to do something extremely delicate. He's trying to sleep as the uh, kinetic field is forming, so that he can catch people and they won't be able to exit the kinetic field until it's up. Because you do have that moment. The, what VP are trying to do, and this is the phase boots on Jakiro actually, this is why this, this phase boots is here. As the kinetic field is establishing itself, you have that moment to get out. That's what the phase boots on Jakiro gives you. Jakiro's an incredibly slow hero, but with phase active, he can get out. Nyx can get out with Vendetta. Uh, uh, Weaver can get out with uh, Shukachi. So the idea is everybody's fast enough to try to escape that lockdown with the kinetic field static store. So I see Cup to counteract that, to prevent anybody from getting out, especially the Weaver. They're using this sleep to try to cover that time interval, but that's like super duper delicate. That is hard to pull off. Yeah, it's definitely a very difficult thing to do, and that maybe explains why he's just sort of doing the really bursty uh, Naga sleeps. So he's just trying to catch him in there, I and mean, that makes a lot of sense, and it's definitely very powerful if it works out. It ends up looking really awkward from the spectator's perspective. It's like, why are you popping ult and like turning it off basically immediately, and Static Storm durations being wasted? But if he's catching people in the connect field, definitely a powerful effect. And it does lead to kills on this puck uh, multiple times now, actually, so... If that's the goal, that's what they're actually intending to do, then it's definitely very, very good of them. And very, like you're saying, delicate. Precise timing is necessary.
VP have the Radiance? I, I like this. I think the timing is perfectly fine. Keep in mind that he had to jungle, including dual jungle for a while, so this is a, a really respectable time for the Midas Radiance, 20 minutes. Uh, and the Naka Illusions are not that special yet. He's been ganking so much that his Illusions are really not great. He doesn't even have the Diffusal, and he's been missing a lot of timing on the Midas activations. It's going to go... You can see I'm taking a sideways path just to use the... You should really use Midas. Use your Midas, bro. You bought this. Yeah, they're going to try and kill this bear in the mid lane. They'll get it. Yeah. Okay, they use the Midas. There he goes. Oh, the <laughs> knockdown. <laughs> Now they get it in the end. Uh, actually, we just Zik got the last hit. Interesting. Uh, so that's some additional farm for the Zorkter. Helps him get that mech, maybe, in the near future. It's still kind of far off, though. And it looks like there's... Diffusal is going to be finished now on Jackal. So sort of the first biggish item post Midas. Grabs a drum before that, but not really an expensive or game-changing item. Just something that gets some additional stats and a little bit of move speed for you and your team. And team fight. I mean, it's a great team fight. Little little boost for you to kill the people in the while they're locked down too. Like Tame My Wild, for instance. He's had a lot of trouble. He hasn't died that much. But how many times has he been locked down or locked out of a fight? The Lincolns might help for Illidan, but again, Illidan's farm nothing special. He tops the last hit charts, but his net worth is only down about where Batriders is, and definitely behind this Midas uh, Naga Siren and this Midas Nature's Prophet. I think VP are fine. Uh, but Icy Cup, I think if they use farm well, they can sort of start leaping ahead. I would love to see a fairly early Naga Heart, because I feel like it'll be so strong against this Radiance. Suddenly your illusions just straight up don't care. Yeah, I think going tanky on the side of Icy Cup's Naga definitely is something they could think about. Just because VP don't have a response, like you've been saying all game, what are they going to do against all these illusions late game? If he pick up, uh, picks up an early Heart instead of maybe going something more aggressive for damage, it's going to be pretty difficult for them to eventually push through in the illusions to even touch the other base, even with Lundra getting pretty big now with this Radiance. Yeah, I mean, the other interesting thing to me is, unusually for a, for a game involving VP, they haven't even felt comfortable going for Rush at all. Part of it is no Medallion, and no real heroes that really want to build the Medallion. They definitely want to rush Blink on Nyx Assassin. They want to get Arsard into more fights. Oh, he actually builds a Bracer for a little more survivability, but I do expect him to try to save up for Blink. Might get caught out here. Resolution gets him. Yep, they're going to get the pull. I'm pulling him back, and Jackal's going to be there as well. Are they going to pop the Static Storm is the real question I have, and they're not going to need to. Jackal's going to be able to get the last hit with that Riptide doing actually pretty big damage there. And now Illidan mm, giving Illidan. chase. I think this is oh, definitely very God. questionable. Yup. Illidan is pretty much dead here. I just, I don't know what Illidan was thinking there. Like, of course not going to pop sleep and you're going to go down. NS now forced to overcommit trying to save his carry. And Arsart, even post buyback, is trying to get in there to help. Throwing up the spike carapace. Now the vendetta as well trying to get away. But there's enough. And it's a triple kill for always want to fly. Dying. Yeah. I don't know. Bear goes down this as well. Flesh. His Lesh this game, dude! Like, it's been so- Oh, they get the gem back. They're gonna rec recover the gem, Mag's gonna take it away. That's a big deal on the gem war battle. More buybacks for VP, maybe they get- Jackal, yes! Tame My Wild manages to chase him down, so they get half a loaf. We just Zik trying to TP out. Will there be an entangle? Tame My Wild misses the illusory orb that would have killed him. And Disruptor walks away. They lose Batrider and Naga, but that's okay. They recover the gem, and VP use two buybacks, Arsart and Tame My Wild. And even J uh, Always Wanna Fly walks away from the fight. We talked about how this is a VP-ish line. Always Wanna Fly is playing the Arsart Lashrak, and he's been doing tremendously. Split Earth's on point. He's even going Heavy Lightning Storm, which Arsart does and almost no other professional Lashrak player does. He's kind of showing up Arsart at one of his own heroes. This has been an amazing game for him. 4-1 and 10. Yeah, uh, to be fair, I think Arsart's been playing pretty well in this Nyx Assassin. has been moving around and gotten quite a few key kills. It's just... I don't know, Illidan hasn't had that much success on this Weaver this far, and I think there, in particular, was a very questionable play, just like charging in with your team down, like, no one's really close to you, you know that you're faster than everyone else, the Naga Sleep comes out and just immediately gets Illidan killed, Get, Illidan actually got hit there Illusion. by uh, the Nature's Prophet ult to pop his Lincolns, so he knew these Prophetlings were walking around, ends up killing a couple. <laughs> Just kind of a silly thing happening there. I don't know. Yeah, and he's been using... What I really like about these Dendrocrons, the Treants, is he's been scouting Roche for, like, less five minutes sustained with these Treants. So he knows VP's propensity to take Roche, and he's just non-stop keeping an eye on it with the Dendrocrons. Yeah, and what do you think uh, Illidan's next pickup is going to be here on the Weaver? He's finished the Lincolns for quite some time now and hasn't really picked anything else up, but I don't know what you, what you think he's going to go for here. 
It's got to be probably damage, right? Uh, they have to have damage from some source. Macropire is not going to do it. Lone Druid will do it to some extent, but as the Naga gets tankier, that's going to start falling apart. So uh, if they want to try to contest the push, I always like Desolator on Weaver. But I know that Illidan doesn't particularly love it, so maybe just the MKB? Yeah, I could see it, and Resolution going to get the ult on Arsart once again. They're trying to put some good damage down, but it doesn't look like they're going to be able to commit to it. Not anyone else close enough. Always want to fly making his way in now. But he's already been able to disengage Illidan, charging forward once again. Not maybe learning from his past mistakes that he needs to play a little bit more passively. Uh, regardless, not going to get punished for it this time, and they will disengage, so that last one not being utilized to any real effect. Sure. But I like I like what they're doing to try to lock Arsard out of just going super ham, right? Like, they they know that they have the gems, they have some of the vision advantage. Like, we talked about how important vision is for Icy Cup. Right now, the vision's fantastic. Uh, VPs is good, too, but they don't have access to a gem. And so they're using this gem to bully Arsart and make sure that every Vendetta is not going to find a solo support. That's how Arsart starts carrying this game from the four position for his team, is free kills on Disruptor and Lesh. And he hasn't gotten barely any. Yeah, he's definitely struggled to find the kills. They're moving up to this top lane to defend it, and it looks like Icy Cup are disengaging from that tower at the moment. Uh, I don't know if they're going to go back in, it looks like they are thinking about it, hanging out here. I think they probably should be feeling confident to take these team fights. They've had a lot of success thus far in team fights, and if they can win a couple more, it's going to be really easy for them to close out this game. Yeah, uh, I, I honestly think I like this decision making from Icy Cup in both of these games. I, I love seeing a team over the course of an event just play better and better. The last time we saw it was like Maus at the Western Qualifiers. And now we're seeing it from Icy Cup, I feel. Every single series, they play better than the one before. Yeah, definitely. Uh, they played well against Quantic. It wasn't, like, super impressive with oh, this fight. one. Yeah, they're going to go in. Uh, the fire already being laid out. Tamar Wild and Illidan going to be caught in Static Storm, and there's just nothing either of them can do. They're so, so weak to this silence effect. Nice. But they both survive. Illidan able to get the time lapse off, and now we're turn around. They've already taken down one, two, three. Resolution being chased down as well by the bear. It looks like he's going to go down. And the only one left alive is going to be Nature's Prophet Mag. He's going to be ported, able to port out. The kinetic field lasted like a half second too short. They needed... I would say, yeah. I would actually say the sleep lasting a half second too long, almost. Yeah, that could be they part didn't, of it too. They didn't land the split earth, and a couple more ticks of Pulse Nova takes Weaver and Puck. Again, it's the unfamiliarity with the strategy. I, I feel that the, the sleeps are just not... You need them to be really well-timed because of what they're trying to do. They're trying to lean on this kinetic field to win entire teamfights for them. And that requires sleep to take out just enough of it to lock people in, but not enough of it to ruin any of your damage. And they miss the split earth for once. And the fact that Illidan lives with full health because he time lapses and Tame My Wild lives completely turns that fight. And just as we praise Icy Cup, I mean, the decision making was actually good. It was just the like mechanic execution that failed them there. And that's a big window back into the game for VP. Big, big, big. Yep, they defend their 2-2, they take a big team fight, trading 4 for 1, only losing the Puck, who was dead basically as the fight began. And then they get the Roshan, and they end up giving it to Weaver. So uh, Weaver is going to have that Aegis be a little bit more survivable in these fights, and now they can't rely on that to just take Weaver out of the fight completely, and even with perfect execution. The Aegis is just going to bring him right back, and then you're going to have to deal with time lapse, and you're not going to have a Static Storm for that second life. Yeah, I honestly think uh, VP definitely... They ran the risk, if they lost that last fight, of having the game spiral completely into the gutter for them. Like, I think they could straight up lose based on the snowballing effect off of that fight. So the fact that they won is their route back into this game. They need to... While Weaver has Aegis, Icy Cup can't actually win these 5v5 fights anymore, in my opinion. They've been winning them. The ones that they've won, they win on the back of trapping Weaver and Puck and killing them. And now you don't do that. There is simply no way that you get through the three Weaver health pools of the pre-Aegis, where he, he'll just let himself die if necessary, and then the time lapse. Because you only have one Static Storm to work with. Disruptor's not going to get Refresher. Yeah, and one of the biggest things is if they have that little bit of a mechanical glitch, once again, even on the first life, if they use the Static Storm and like almost bring him down, if he gets that time lapse off pre-Aegis, he can get another one off post Aegis very easily. It's only got a 50 second cooldown if the fight is lasting quite long, and if he hits level 16, it'll be a 40 second cooldown. 
they're gonna if they have to fight through four health bars on this weaver it's gonna be pretty difficult to actually win a fight that way not until they get quite a bit more farm and maybe illidan just ends up picking no survivability up the entire rest of the game he did go for mithril hammer though so it could be that desolator like you mentioned i think that might be the right pickup it gives a lot of damage and that armor reduction is going to be very effective against some of these squishy heroes like mag has yep. he's okay armor jackal's doing okay but like you look at always want to fly he has six he'll have negative one whenever this weaver's attacking and if the swarm's yep. on that's even less I don't think BKB would be the worst option either. It has really poor synergy with the Lincolns in the sense that you're building two items to do the same thing, but either way, I think Desolator or BKB would be strong pickups. I would love to see the Dezo. If they can push before Icy Cup have amazing Naga items, so here comes another fight maybe. Yeah, they're trying to get this tower down. The bear going to be able to get the last hit and now backing off, but the bear does go down. Are they going to commit to the fight? Is the request a resolution Resummon. spotted out by the swarm going to be able to retreat? The stun is up on KSI. And uh, now always want to fly, going to disengage, Jackal throwing out the sleep, it looks like they're just going to back off and they infect too, with Jackal porting out. Can but always want to fly, chase? probably dead. Always want to fly, not having a lot of success. They save oh, him though, and wow. Stag Storm going to land on uh, Tamar while he's going to go down, and does in fact Illidan, Illidan. taking a lot of damage, the time lapse just in time, was taking a lot of damage there, but able to get out in time, Mag now, coming forward, I don't know who he's chasing after, maybe NS is going to port out, there's the scythe though, and NS going to go down once again on this Jakiro, I just don't know why they kept chasing there, I feel like they don't so want to dive greedy. that tier 3, it was a very greedy play from VP, they w by all means won the fight, they forced out a lot of big spells, they got the tower, they could have disengaged completely cre clean, and Instead, they chase after Leshrac, which I feel like has been their downfall several times this game thus far. Yeah, seductive Leshrac, really securing that for Icy Cup, a fight that they really didn't have the upper hand in at all, and they get two free kills off of it. Did they peel the Aegis? No, they didn't peel the Aegis no, in just the end. barely uh, Illidan survived. Right, but still a good fight for Icy Cup in the end. Um, and uh, VP now has their own gem. I like this vision battle, but yeah, I mean, really, that was just Tame My Wild getting greedy. Straight up. And he thought that he could get kills. He came really close, so I understand. And I mean, he does have the Russian fighting Dodo spirit, so he's got to kind of go in. But yeah, it is BKB. All right. I feel good because I kind of called it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, BKB is certainly a very good item, but I feel like when you're behind you and you need to take down all of these heroes yeah. that are starting to get tankier and tankier on IC Cup, you're going to need to start building damage. Survivability is definitely... Who's... Them, right? uh, survivability is definitely very powerful when you're ahead, because if you just survive in fights, you're probably going to win them from ahead. When you're behind, though, I feel like you need to be able to take these heroes down quickly, and they just really don't have that. Though the AC is picked up now on yeah. Kasai. Yeah, Kasai is getting bigger and bigger. I, I like his build-up. This AC is actually quite slow as a follow-up, considering the fact that he has Midas and he got Quick Radiance. You expect the Assault to come earlier than 13 minutes later, but it's not bad by any means. Oh, the Resolution's Shishan. still fishing. This is bad, though. I don't think this is that great. No, and he got the Spike Carapace off in time. That means they're forced to use this Sleep just to uh, try and save the fight. They're going to go on Arsar and NS with the Static Storm. Not, yeah, the Static Storm combo. And we'll take them down, but now they don't have anything for the big heroes. Tamar all going to get Sai, though. It looks like he's going to go down. Another kill for Mag. Sai is still trying to do every can, but not having...